I spent the past week going crazy learning Blender. Today, I'll go over the basics of learning Blender, my personal things I learned to do and to avoid, and we'll all be continuing this into the next week. Hey, hey, it's CK, and welcome back to 52 Skills in 52 Weeks. This week was Blender. Going into this, I had no experience with 3D designing or 3D modeling. The closest I've ever gotten was working at Autodesk, and that wasn't even for the AutoCAD section. Now, I've watched some videos before of like Blender and how it's used and what to do, but it's complicated. It's a very complicated software, and a lot of people say that the learning curve is tremendous. And I will say it is. There's a lot that you can see and do, and it's probably even more complicated than learning how to video edit. Despite those fears, this skill is essential to me for two reasons. One, I've been wanting to get into this skill for years. I've been kind of tracking different YouTubers that come up on my feed that make me inspired to want to learn it. And then two, I need this skill for a lot of future skills I want to do. A lot of the skills require modeling or some kind of 3D design or animation in some sort. So for me to be able to move forward with other skills that I'm passionate about and inspired to do, I need this skill to be done and I need to learn it very, very efficiently. The best way to learn Blender, in my opinion, is to go to the community, ask questions, be a part of the community, and immerse yourself in the group alongside the software that you're using. So I went to Reddit. I went to the subreddit Blender and found some, hey, how should I start learning Blender posts. In there, I found a comment from someone that is really good at teaching other people Blender and responding in the subreddit. He gave a few YouTube channels that can inspire you and motivate you to learn Blender very efficiently. Everyone has seen the donut. The donut is the quintessential of learning Blender and being able to understand all of Blender, apparently. I personally skipped that because I didn't feel like learning how to make a donut. I don't think I'll ever make a donut in the future. And that's because what I want to make in Blender is never going to really touch that. So I found something out. I found a YouTuber named Grant Abbott. Grant Abbott has a two-part series called Blender 4 for Absolute Beginners, a comprehensive guide from scratch. What he did was he went through the process of installing Blender, navigating it, learning shortcuts, and both where to find something in Blender or on a shortcut if you're able to use it. The reason I say that is because there are some shortcuts that require a numpad, some shortcuts that require the F keys. And if you have a keyboard like me that doesn't have all those, I have the F keys, but not the numpad, which seems pretty essential to Blender. He shows you options to be able to do it from within the toolbar. I feel like everything I learned here enabled me to go to the next YouTuber that inspired me to want to learn Blender. 3D Tutor. Hey, it's CK from the future. Just a quick tangent from whatever you're watching. I need to tell you something very important. There's something called proportional editing that when you're working on something, if you're trying to move something and other objects are moving with it, there's this button called proportional editing that's causing the other objects to move with it. Let me just show you real quick. You can see that right here, I have this box. In this box, it's moving by itself. It's good, right? And so in this box, it's moving on its own. But if I were to click this thing right here, this thing called proportional editing objects, which can accidentally be pressed with the O key to turn on, right? And then if I go back to edit, everything else moves with it. Whoa, whoa, that's so weird. Why is it doing that? Yeah, just, just so you know, just, just make sure that this is turned off because it's going to mess with your head a lot if you don't know. Yeah, so uh, go ahead, go back. 3D Tutor taught me about making medieval fantasy landscapes and objects. He was a person that inspired me to really want to learn Blender, honestly, and get me to this point. Now, before I go into that, I want to preface that the basics are essential. The basics are really what you need to do to be able to be efficient in any skill that we are learning. So if you learn a basic, you will be able to master those basics and you will be further along anyone else inside of a skill. With Blender especially, with all the options there are to learn and different paths to go down, learning the basics, understanding everything of how it works is essential to be able to move forward and make your own things in the future. 
Now back to 3D Tutor, what I've been learning from him is how to create environments, mainly in the medieval section because his name is 3D Tutor. I love the name 3D Tutor because I personally love tutors. English tutors, I talked about it in the sketching week last week about wanting to learn architectural sketching so I can make those. Now here we are trying to make a 3D English tutor for ourselves. And aside from tutors, he does medieval things and I decided to just buy his membership. A YouTube membership is around like five, 10, $15. His was $10 to be able to get the courses, to be able to learn more things from him. And he also has a lot of free step-by-step -step processes as well. But I paid for the course because I want to support him. He's a creator that I've been wanting to support for a long time and to learn from. But you don't have to buy these. You can learn for free online. You can learn how to do the donut. You can learn how to do anything that you want for free on YouTube. So keep doing that if you want to go down the cheap route. I'm still going through the process of creating my English tutor and creating the landscape that I have. I've been learning a lot about blends, references, shading, the different assets that I can use and the assets that were given to me and how to utilize them across many projects and how to adjust them to make them more efficient. And there's a lot to learn in Blender. It's just a week isn't enough. And I've seen someone do 100 hours before, which was even crazier because they made the same things that I'm making now. They did the donut actually. So I decided that I'm going to continue doing this course with the 3D Tutor and then move on to the next skill in between the course. I hope this inspired you to learn Blender, or if not, learn any kind of skill that you want to learn. Because the best thing that you could do for yourself is to learn skills that enable you to be the best version of who you are and just be free and creative about what you want to do. If you like this journey, please subscribe to follow the rest of the weeks that I'll be doing and hit that like button so that way I know that this is something that you like. Until then, I'm gonna continue doing Blender and I'll see you next week with the other skill that ties into Blender that you might be able to assume, but I'll see you then. Later.